What's up, Amelia Moore here, giving you the 411 on the music scene. You know what time it is. Now, our next guest, what more can I say other than using the words of the producers that worked with her? Talented, gifted, spiritual, bright, and most importantly, beautiful. We're talking about none other than Heather Headley. Welcome to What's the 411, Hi, Heather. How are you? Thank you very much. How are you? I'm wonderful. Good. You know, I had mentioned once to you before about my mom. That was the first time I had known yeah, about you. Yeah. You know, she had seen you in The Lion King, and she said, oh, the one that played Nala. Oh. <laughs> and then she saw you again in Aida, and she was like, oh, my favorite singer. <laughs> so she follows you. How is it now? You know, they always talk about the chicken and the egg. Yeah. Which one came first? Right. Which one came first for you, acting or singing? I don't know. You know, it's it's kind of, I think in, in the scheme of things, it was the singing, because I started singing in church and singing to myself and stuff like that. But the funny thing is that even with all that singing in the church, I always had like a character behind it. I was always performing for something. So it wasn't just like, you know, I'd hum to myself, yes. But then I'd, you know, go outside and, you know, find some kind of character to start playing that I saw on television, you know. Are you the only child? No, I think like an only child, but no, no. Um, my brother's five years younger. Oh, so okay. I had five years of only child time, which my parents, I'm sure, would be like, ooh, mistake. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so when he came along, it was like, ugh. But now we're, we're great. You know, you cool. know how it is. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm the only sibling. child, so I don't Are know. you? But I'm from a huge family. So in a sense, I do know. They all stood in my house. Yeah. I had cousins that lived with me. Like, yeah. They were like my sisters and brothers. So <laughs> it's all good. I can relate. Yeah, I got a little brother. And he's, he's a great guy. He's um, into, pro he wants to produce music. Oh, hi. So yeah. So, um, so you're an inspiration for him. Um, I hope so. I hope so. You know, That's we nice. he asks a lot of questions, and I try to answer as much as I can. But you know, he has to go down his own wo road. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's about a journey. It is. Most it definitely. is about a journey. Yeah. Speaking of which, talk about the Tony Award. I mean, you know, you put, you get on stage, and you're like, wow, I'm on Broadway. Then you know, maybe I might get a Tony. Then you get nominated. Wow, maybe I might win. Then you win. Now that it's all afterwards, how do you feel about it? The same way or no? Yeah, oh yeah, um, it's still a little amazing to me. Like sometimes I'll, you know, I'll be in the house and I'll say, "Oh my goodness, it's here," you know, because I have it in a place where I can't see it every day. Mm. I have to go to it to find it, you know, to see it. And so, um, so yeah, it, it's like sometimes you don't even remember until somebody brings it up and you go there and you say, "Oh my gosh." You know, this lives in my house, and, and my name is on it. I didn't steal it, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not a carbon copy. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. real. This is <laughs> real. I can really bite into it, yeah. Um, so it, it really is an amazing thing, and especially with the journey that I took, you know, it's just, it's amazing how God works things out. Yeah, he does work he it does, out. Yeah, he does, yeah, because, really does. you know, and with that whole thing, I just, I remember being there two years before with The Lion King and kind of saying to myself, you know, when will I sit? up there like when will I sit in a seat that they have told me I have to sit in because I'm nominated right. you know much less like when will I ever win and I remember I kind of made a little pact to myself like I was like you know I don't know if I want to come back until I'm there and two years later you know I was kind of sitting in the seat you know it's overwhelming of, it's terribly overwhelming and yeah. then they call your name and you're like oh okay you know. Now let's talk about the album because mm -hmm. you've had some tremendous names: Gordon Pars, I mean uh, Gordon Chambers, Gordon Chambers yeah. um, Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis. Yeah. I mean, you know, those are remarkable producers. What have you learned from them? You know, because they, you know, they had said about you know how they just were impressed with the vocal capabilities that you had, and how like you were just very serious about your art. But what did you learn from them? Um, you know, they taught me about the studio because I didn't know, you know, you think you know something because you think, you know, I'll just go in there and sing, you know, how hard could this be? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then you get in there and it's three o'clock in the morning, you're like, send me home. <laughs> but um, I just, you, you learn about the, the intricacies of it. That yes, you know, you can sing a song, but but every line is important. And like with people like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and all the producers, they were all about going back in and making sure it was the best performance. And they pushed me. You know, like a lot of times you can walk in and just say, ha, huh, you know, I, I'm sure you can do it as well, <laughs> where you go in and you're like, hi, you know, Zemelia, da 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 done. <laughs> and you walk out and then there's somebody who goes, I know that was good. That's our executive I know, producer. <laughs> yeah, I know that was good and everybody will think that's good, but I know you can do even better. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I think they, they, they taught me about, you know, just pushing and the intricacies of every note and every, you know, like every line of the song. And so um, 
So I learned that from them. You know, there were other little things as well, like you know, patience. adjusting from the the theater. What about know. patience? Oh yeah, yeah, and the fact that they can work until you know five o'clock in the morning. I just don't, you know. You can ask anybody. I'm Cinderella. Like right about twelve o'clock, <laughs> Cinderella changes. And so at twelve o'clock too, my voice is like, okay, time to go to bed. You know. And so there is this, there's this perseverance that they have. You know, through the night, the stamina and this patience just to get things right. Mm. You know what I mean? And they'll just, they're like, they're like lions. They'll just lie in wait of the right song. You know what I that mean? That is so true. That yeah, so they'll just... And the other thing, you know, that's really... Not to cut you off, I'm no, sorry, please. but that's really interesting is how they can hear. Yeah. You hear a whole different way when you're in the studio with those producers. Like, yeah, yeah. They hear things and you're like, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh, yeah. Yes. And they're like, well, maybe we could get that just a little... Yeah. And you're like, wow. You don't understand because at the time, you know, you hear the song and you're like, this is pretty much the most awful thing I've ever heard. And then you don't understand that they're going to take it into a room and add live strings and add this and add that. And they hear things. I mean, that's what vision is all about. Mm. And that's why they get paid for what they do, you know? Speaking of vision, five years from now, mm. where do you anticipate you to be? <laughs> um, <laughs> Five years from now, I, I hope to be happy. That's all I want. I really just want to be exceedingly happy. And I think I'll be happy, you know, if I'm on stage and, you know, happy singing. I hope that, you know, by then I'd have done a movie, maybe getting ready to do something on Broadway again, if mm. not already. Um, that maybe we had an album two or two out. You know, maybe a gospel. I would love to do a gospel album. You hear that? Um, yes, definitely. That's the next thing in order. Um, it's something like that, you know, um, and and my family life is amazing. I'd, I'd mm. love to have that. I'd love every. My thing is that every aspect of myself has to be better because that's all part of who I am. Balance. And definitely. So if this part is fine, I'm a better performer. And if I'm a good, perf if I perform better, I find you know I'm okay. I'm better at home. Yeah. But you know they they all balance each other out. You know, not giving. Of course, there's more credence to the family and you know my relationships with God and stuff like that. But but. You know, you have to. It this is piece out. of you. This is piece of everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can That's relate. True. I yeah. can totally relate. Yeah. You know, let's talk about um, when you first came to the United States, <laughs> um, and you know, in your bio, you had mentioned it was a little bit of a culture shock. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to know, from your perspective, what from home you would take here, and what from here you would change to adapt to make that yeah more mesh. You know, Trinidad is where I'm from, the mm -hmm. island, and Trinidad is um, only after I left it that I figured out how remarkable a place it is. You know, because when you're there, you're like, oi! <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, when we go leave? You know, but then you get to the States and you find out, nothing against the States, but you find out that our people move at a different we move at a different pace. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're competitive but yet calm. Mm -hmm. You know, we sit and enjoy family and enjoy life and enjoy the time. You know, I have some cousins that I remember I, I went home one time and my cousin Tom, I think it was, was on the on the the stomp outside when I got there. And when I left ten hours later, he was on the stomp. <laughs> you know, outside when I left there. But Tom has a job. And so you're like how do you do? Did you go to work? What happened? But it's just a different pace, you know? I learned right. about God. I learned about music. I learned that women are beautiful at any size. I learned that women have a sway and a swagger in them that, you know, with them, even when they had buckets on their heads or washing clothes, that there, there was just a beauty. My role models were in the community, you know? Mm. I learned that to love myself and not necessarily this talent. Actually, that was second hand, right. you know what I mean? They were more like, you know, well, Heather, you need to get yourself together. We know you can sing or whatever, but, you know, get yourself together. And so um, those were the things that hopefully I brought with me or brought to the States. And then America is a, a totally different, you know, thing. You know what I mean? You learn, you learn sometimes about excess, which is sometimes bad and sometimes good when you come from certain environments that now, you know, you can go, maybe things are cheaper than they were in Trinidad, and maybe you can get something, it's more accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that um, with all due respect to Trinidad, there's no Broadway in Trinidad. You know, and I've ne I would have never had that opportunity there. Yeah, a lot you know? of opportunities. There are lo lots of opportunities, you know, and so with the mixture of both, I think that it's it's been a great, 
just a great, you know, thing for me. Would it be sufficient enough to say it is what you make it? I think so too. I think so. You know, they they always say, you know, somebody gives you lemons, you know. Why don't you make an Anna Palmer? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not enough to just make lemonade anymore. You yeah. Know? Get some iced tea involved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get a smoothie. <laughs> if somebody gives you lemons, you make a smoothie. smoothie. <laughs> and, a, and a key lime pie or something. You know, because it is what you make it. There's Very some true. Somebody once told me that, he said to me, he said, Hev, if I hand you an apple seed, what do you have in your hand? And I looked at it and I said, well, I've got an apple tree you know, mm. with lots of apples. I've got an orchard, you know, and I thought that I was being smart, you know, because that's how I was thinking. And he said, no, you can feed the world, you mm. know, because he said from that tree comes other apples and those apples fall and then those apples have trees. And when you think of it like that, that's how our lives are, that, you know, Absolutely. God hands us our lives and you can, you in your life can say, well, I have one tree, I have an orchard. And then there's some people that are like, well, I, I just can have feed the apple the w- seed. Yeah, some people are like, I just have the apple seed. And some people are like, I can feed the world. That's how. You know? And so it's like, that. it really is what you make it. Last few questions, because I know uh, your time is very precious. And <laughs> we always got to give the 411. But I want to talk about the album. I would be remiss if I didn't. Okay. Um, one of the songs that I absolutely love is the one that you talk to the sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, what inspired you? to write that in particular song? Well, I think it was something about looking at my community, looking at the community in general, and looking um, at my own self. You know, I, um, in my life, I always tell people that Sister Girl, which is the song you're talking right. about, mm-hmm. um, the first verse is based on my life, and the second verse is based on my life, if not for the grace of God. Mm. Because I think at 14, I thought I was like 22. Mm. You know, I thought, you know, <laughs> I was cute, and you know, I remember guys, even older guys, talking to me. You know, and me telling them, well, I'm 15 or 14, and they'd be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and you, you, you know, but it's um, it's one of those things. And if not for the grace of God, if not for my parents, if not for the church and stuff, I could have had a lot of problems. I could have ended up, you know, pregnant, and and my we would not have been sitting here today because I think, you well, know, it took you down a different path. a totally different path, you know. And so um, I see it all the time in our community that you know some of these young girls are just, you know, going in and, and, and going into certain actions that mm. have these crazy long-term consequences. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That this one, however long it's going to be, is going to maybe last you for the rest of your life. I like to tell my son, cause and effect. Yes. And you really have to think about what you're causing in your life be- and the effect that it's going to have long-term. And if Definitely. you don't think in that perspective, yeah. that action that you take yes. just might cause a long-term effect it, very much and so. take you on a whole nother path yeah yeah from the one that you were destined to do mm-hmm. or the one you desire to do definitely so and God has a you know he has a plan for us and a journey for us and sometimes with these cause you know these causes that we we take on you know our effects take us off mm. and yes he's gonna be with us but you know your life could have been a totally different path Absolutely. and so my attitude with you know with the young girls is just calm down wait I have no problems. I believe in abstinence. Slow your you know, roll. Slow it. Stop it. <laughs> Don't slow it. Stop it. And just calm down. You know? Because I can go on with this forever. Oh, you okay. know me. So I'll, I'll calm down. Because I think a lot of times with guys, you know, and love the men, but a guy can have six kids at home and still get a scholarship, mm. you know, to like some football, some university to play football. For a girl, it is much harder. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. it's it's much more difficult. And so, you know, just slow it down. To stop. have a child for a woman is mind, body, and soul. To yes. have a child for a man, it can be mind, body, and soul if he's really into it, but it's yes. mostly body. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start me. <laughs> Don't start me. But that's well, it, you know. There you have yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the 411. I wanted to ask her plenty more but that's enough <laughs> go to the website check it out www.what's the 411 we're here with heather headley know what time it is it's heather time What's the